Hello YouTube world, this is Logic Crazy and I'm Jonathan. Here's yet another tutorial on creating a chess engine. Um, I left last time with a bit of a dilemma on my hands and the solution is rather simple. We had forgot to uh, tell the king where, tell the engine where the king is. Um, king C had not, uh, it, it was at its default value which is zero if it's undeclared. Um, so what you have to add here is um, basically scan through each value here. Um, king position C is obviously start at zero. And what happens is um, this will scan through every spot looking for um, an A. So it will go through this chessboard at the king and position C looking for a capital A and as long as it's not a capital A add one to the C. So the moment it becomes a capital A then king position it stays at that whatever that spot is and then it does the same for lowercase a. So that is basically how you scan looking for which kings run. Now when we run this you will notice there are four answers. Now I had said there were five but I was mistaken because we have not yet programmed in a pawn move. Pawns moving up here was my fifth m option. So now king can really only move away. It can move there, one spot, two spot, three spot, four spot, and that should correspond to what those four spots are. If I pick this one, five, four, five, three, you go down to five, over to four, so that's five, four, and then five, three, that's saying jump there. And there'll be a five, four, four, that would be jump here, and so on and so on. So we have just uh, now told it, hey, you can restrict your moves. No longer are, is this, was this queen moving over an option because an A was found there. Now if you don't put kings on the board, uh, you're going to run into errors because um, basically this checking for A will, will scan every square and it'll jump onto the next square, which doesn't ex next spot in the array, which doesn't exist. And so make sure both A's are on the board. Uh, it's only, uh, it's a val it's not a valid board if there aren't two kings on there. So uh, that's uh, perfectly uh, proper. Now we're going to try to finish off this king safe, checking the knight and the pawn. We will work on pawns even though we haven't created them. So let's uh, get on to this. Um, so we'll have a knight and we will have um, two for loop thingies. Now, I'm just going to copy, whoops, um, copy this bishop thingy right here, just because it happens to have two for loops uh, nested inside each other. All right, so we have i, and again, plus equals two, j plus equals two. Now, try. Um, now we don't have a while because whiles are for checking, it could be any distance away. Knights, we know exactly how far. So we're going to get rid of this line here. Get rid of that. Now, we start right off with an if. So we'll say if, now instead of knight, it's that, and we can obviously get rid of this uh, whole queen thing because we're not checking for queens as well. Um, so if knight equals... Now here it's a little bit different. Um, there's no temp, or we're not worried about what temp is. We're going to just leave it as i, and the other one as j times two. So one up, two over, for instance, uh, is roughly how this works. Because these values are negative one and one, and anyways, and it'll go into all different directions. Uh, if you remember from our night experiment, so. If that, then return false. And otherwise, this whole catch exception thing. Now, we'll paste that again. Get rid of this temp value since we don't adjust it. And now it's i times 2 and j. And that'll check the other four places that the knight could move. And if either of those cases, then return false. And that is it for the knight. Very simple. Now you might wonder why not place this if statement and this if in the same catch. Um, and basically, if you remember, the reason we do a try 
is because let's say the knight was on the edge of a board and it's trying to go up and over off the board and this catch will uh, prevent errors. It'll just uh, basically just skip that and just jump onto the next line and won't uh, produce any results, which is what we want. Uh, we don't want to analyze illegal moves or uh, have to deal too much with errors. Um, and so why not put them both in the same? Well, the answer is if this one produces an error, then it will just skip and not try the second one. And so uh, at least that's how I understand it. So uh, that's the way I programmed it. All right. So we're going to create another one. And this one is the last one. And it is pawn. So we're going to look to see if there's a pawn. And this one is uh, quite different. And it will be quite different than we will program pawns. Because think about when is, uh, let me show you a board. Where do we have here? OK. Um, Let's uh, look at some positions here. Uh, notice, uh, let's say my uh, uh, king was there. Uh, just looking at pawns. Let me just clear the board. All right. So you have a, a list of, uh, let's keep them white. It's easier to see. Okay. You got your old pawns here. Now, where is king safe? Is it safe there? Yes. Um, there? Yes. Uh, there? Um, no, it's not safe. And the reason is... Um, not because of this one. This one doesn't matter. It's this one and this one which make it not safe. So the only cases where a king is not safe because of a pawn is if a pawn is up and diagonal to it in either way. Right there or right there. No matter where it is, that does, that's the place. And therefore, when a king is here or here, pawns don't matter because a pawn can never... Their white pawn starts here and goes down. It can't uh, come back. And so um, up here, don't bother even checking for pawn. So we're going to program that into there. So we're going to say if king position C is greater or equal to 16. Now, this is basically saying uh, as long as the king is not in the top two rows. Because notice this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This is 8, and this is 16. It always goes up by 16s to 63, and 64 would be the imaginary next one. Um, so this is 16. So if it's greater or equal to 16, if it's here or anywhere else, anywhere further, then check. Then let's do this check. That'll just save a little bit of time when the king is way up there. Although, you know what? in a chess game when it really is the white king up here. I don't know, but in end game scenarios when there aren't really pawns to check, it might save. So anyway, we'll just type it in as is. Uh, we're going to create a four and a catch thing in here. Just paste that in because I'm lazy. Pop that there. And now we're going to look for a pawn, of course. And then we will do minus one, not a plus, minus one, and this one would be minus one as well. Um, and if that, uh, try this, and if that, return false. And we will do another one where we try this whole same thing here. And this time, this value here would be, horizontally would be a plus one. So basically we're saying, Minus one, so go one up, and one over, and one over. So from this spot, go one up, and here, and here. And check if those two spots contain a pawn, and if they do, then return false. Now, uh, I was actually mistaken. There's one other situation. We've dealt with uh, the pawn, the bishop, uh, the queen, the rook, the knight. Um, but there's one other thing, and that is if there is, let's say, a king there. Uh, now, if there's a king there, white cannot go there because uh, king kind of guards all its pieces around it as far as uh, where kings can go. So we'll create one called king. And this will be the last one in our king check. And we will have a uh, double loop thingy here. 
just like oh, just like the night was and I'll just paste that in there ah. all right now I'll just uh, indent all that to make that all proper make her all look nice indents are just uh, useful the reason I do that is uh, useful for seeing what's inside of what that way I can visually see this is inside of these two brackets without actually really paying attention to the brackets. And it highlights the opposite bracket when you put your mouse by it uh, too, which is really nice. All right, so uh, we're going to modify this, but we want these two ifs. And we're going to change it slightly to be a plus plus and a plus plus. And we're going to also, let's see, uh, we'll leave it as uh, smaller than equals to 1. It starts out at neg 1. So that's all good. Now, uh, notice in our king thing, when we had done this king, uh, let's see, possible a. We basically said if j is not equal to 4. And that's kind of the same thing we're going to do here because we don't want to check uh, the spot of king. King doesn't really defend its own spot. It defends all around. Or at least we're not worried about its own spot. We just want to check all around it because obviously that would mean for a king to move two over. Um, so and we're going to check all around it. So what we're going to say is put a little if thing in here. If, and we'll say, I does not equal zero or J does not equal zero. Now, if either of those, the only time this won't allow anything through is if both, well, if both of those are zero, and then it's checking its own position. All right, so I'll paste all that in there. And uh, we only need one try method in here as well. We can get rid of that other one. So try and if a dot equals, and then this is plus just i, no times, and plus j. If, uh, if you already have that, that's good. So i, j. Then return false. And the king by king is the least likely. It happens more in an end game when the searching is faster anyways, and so we're not worried. That's why I place at the end, because at the start of a game, kings are opposite of each other, and they uh, rarely ever interact until the game speeds up, uh, thinking-wise. All right. So let's now see what happens. Now, when I run this same thing, uh, still four methods, and the reason, of course, is pawn doesn't move. But let's uh, add another thing here. Let's put a um, an A there. Now, by putting an A there, now let's get rid of it. Well, we won't worry about pawns here. Let's assume that's OK. And now. Uh, we'll leave this, we'll make this a queen. Now, this A is still threatened, but A cannot come here. So A can only go one, two, three places, hopefully. And we get three places, because A is there. Now, if I were to change this, so I still defend this spot by putting in a, uh, a knight there. Hopefully, uh, this grid makes sense on where pieces are. I now get four places. Now, let's see. Pawn is here, and the reason I get four is because I can move my king into that blank spot there. It saw that. But now, when I put fill that in, I get three. So, everything is working as should. King safe works. All that we have left to do is put in the pawn uh, moves, and we'll have all the, the basic moves uh, programmed in, and hopefully flawless. Until next time, enjoy Java.